One of the United States' most senior politicians appearing to freeze up in front of reporters. Not once, but twice in a matter of weeks. 81-year-old Mitch McConnell, minority leader of the U.S. Senate, insists he's still seeing out his term. Yet these scenes have reignited an age-old, old-age debate in U.S. political leadership. All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Are they capable? Are they competent after a certain age? Um, we've had those conversations in the past somewhat quietly around Supreme Court justices, but this, I think, really is the first time you're seeing the full-blown national discussion about it as it relates to those elected officials. Presidential candidate Nikki Haley, at 51, calls the U.S. Senate the most privileged nursing home in the country. I considered uh, my age. Former presidential candidate Mitt Romney, upon announcing his upcoming retirement, candidly confessed that those in his late 70s age bracket aren't the right group to be making decisions on the challenges of tomorrow. Though another former presidential contender, 82-year-old Senator Bernie Sanders, is seen to be more in touch with the concerns of many young progressives. Even so, long-serving Representative Nancy Pelosi, aged 83, whilst intending to stand for another term, surrendered her congressional leadership position last year, declaring the hour has come for a new generation. It's a view shared by several fellow octogenarians, enjoying the popular sport of pickleball on a weekday morning. This is the real court of public opinion. No better spot to take a swipe and a shot at folks of a similar age. I mean, at some point, let, let the other guys take over. Let the younger people, well, they, have, they might not know their way around as well, but they got more energy and they're just not going to die in office, you know. It's time to go. Something's going on. And if ego and power are driving the decision to stay, that's not what democracy is about. It's about good representation. And if you can't represent, you got to go. President Joe Biden, however, is batting away claims that he's not up to the job. I've been doing this longer than anybody. And I guess what? I'm going to continue to do it with your help. He has to make the case that, you know, it's possible that he has lost a step and is a little bit slower than he used to be, but that in the case of being president, that age, that experience, that wisdom, that capability that comes from age has been essential to his success in the last two and a half years. Biden's most likely rival in 2024, Donald Trump, is not exactly fresh-faced himself at 77 years old. And these questions of elderliness, gerontocracy, of mental or physical fitness are hardly unprecedented. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit, for political purposes, my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> A now iconic jibe from a presidential debate in decades past. But this isn't something that's simply going to go away for Reagan's White House successes, for Biden, for Trump, for other politicians too. The founding fathers of this country set a minimum age for president, not a maximum. And in Congress, there are no term limits. Many lawmakers are reluctant to resign with great job perks and loyalty to their staff. Dozens of employees who'd otherwise suddenly be out of work. Ultimately, it's not up to the Constitution or lawmakers to dictate whether age becomes a disqualifying factor. It's voters who'll decide. And if even a sliver of them have doubts, that could spell deep trouble for any re-election hopes. Benji Hire, CNA, Washington.